How's everybody doing? This is uh, Shri Rashad, number 38 for the Washington Redskins, and welcome to ProInterviews.org. Who was your role model growing up? Uh, I would probably say Emmett Smith, uh, as far as football players are concerned. I'm from, uh, at the time, I was in Pensacola, Florida, you know, when I was growing up uh, for the most part. So uh, he actually had a card shop that was in town pretty close. So uh, we would go by the card shop all the time and, you know, look at cards and things in there. And every once in a while, he'd make a surprise appearance. So I would say that Emmitt Smith was probably uh, my biggest influence football-wise. Uh, other than football, obviously, you know, most people say it, but it was definitely my dad. He, uh, you know, helped me out as far as whatever sport that it was I was playing at the time, which was everything from soccer to, you know, trying to run track. But uh, football-wise, it was probably Emmitt Smith. He was obviously a great player, and uh, he was a good guy off the field as well, which was uh, just as important. All right. So um, what was your high school football experience like? Uh, my high school football was, you know, probably different than a lot of, you know, a lot of the recruits that go, you know, to, to Division One type school. I actually went to a smaller school. Uh, very glad I made the decision to go there. Uh, prepared me extraordinarily uh, academically uh, for anything that I, you know, faced in college. And I did the same, the same thing sports-wise. It was actually a smaller school. I want to say we, I graduated with around 100 people uh, my senior year. Um, I actually... Football team probably averaged around 30 people by the time I was a senior. So uh, it was a little different. And I've seen teams that have up to 150, 160 guys. We were definitely nothing like that. I uh, got a lot of playing time out of it. Uh, actually ended up helping me out as far as getting into college was concerned because I did play, you know, safety and wide receiver. And uh, I thought I was going to be a wide receiver coming up. But apparently, you know, some of the teams saw the, the film that I had playing safety and they I liked it, liked it a lot, and they got me a couple offers, and UCF was one of the schools that uh, ended up uh, wanting to take me as a safety. But uh, it was definitely, it was awesome. It was, my little brother actually goes there now. Uh, he's kind of going to do the same thing I was at the school. But uh, it, it was fun. It was, it was a great experience, like I said, academically and athletically. And uh, I think I was prepared really well for, for college, for sports, and in the classroom in high school. Mm -hmm. So what was the transition like from a uh, small high school to a uh... It was pretty big. It was pretty big. Uh, like, I, you, like I said, I mean, the high school was a little bit small, so I'd say my transition might have even been a little different than some of the other guys that were coming to school. But, you know, going from a, a, a pretty decent-sized high school to coming to UCF, which is now the second largest in, school in the nation, I, it, was, it was definitely different. Uh, you know, first we started with camp before, you know, school even started. So I kind of got introduced to the football aspect of it first. You know, guys were a lot bigger, a lot faster, a lot stronger. Um, I mean, I was a competitor, so I wanted to do, you know, the best I could, but it was definitely a lot harder as far as, you know, making plays and, and doing things like that. And you had to lift weights and get faster and get stronger and things like that. But as far as, you know, the school was concerned, it was actually, it was a lot bigger as well. So I got used to the, the environment pretty quickly. Uh, but I think I, the transition went, went pretty well for me. I had teammates to help me out. Uh, Atari BB was one of the guys who was here. Uh, that helped me out a lot my freshman year. Uh, he's with the Packers now. I actually just won the Super Bowl. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so it was, it was good. I had a lot of help. Um, academically, we had, you know, staff to help us out with things like that. And uh, football-wise, I had a lot of good coaches to, to make the transition a lot easier. But it's definitely a step up from my high school to college. I used to carry his pads and helmet and get his food and things like that mm -hmm. uh, when I was a freshman, which is, you know, stuff that I guess you have to do. <laughs> It happened. So, uh, speaking of like, true freshman, you got some playing time, and you broke your hand in the second game against Penn State. What was that game like? Right. It was. It was. It was crazy. Uh, it was as big as the transition was coming to practice in camp. It was even bigger to to go out and have to do it on the field. Um, actually, at the time, I set the record for the youngest starter in Division One football. I was 17 when I got to UCF. So uh, my first game. When I actually ended up starting, I was I was pretty young. I think I was, I maybe was pushing 195 weight wise, and that's being generous. I was probably more close, probably closer to 185. So I was pretty small, uh, but I had fun. I had a lot of fun. The energy was great. Uh, my first start was against Penn State, and like you said, it was you know the first or second play of the game. I actually broke my thumb. I didn't have a clue. I didn't know until the game was over when I was trying to take my glove off, and they had they cut my glove off of my hand. Uh, it was obviously it was an injury that I could play through in the game, but I actually ended up needing uh, surgery and get a couple pins in my hands. So I was wasn't able to play for the rest of the season and, and got the red shirt that year. That year, uh, I think it was actually really good for me though. I was able to get adjusted academically in the school uh, a little better, 
learn the system a little better all before I came back next year. And actually was a four year starter after that, came back my redshirt freshman year and, and started with, uh, I don't know if you guys, John L. Neal, Jason Benson, and Joe Burnett. We were all actually four year starters at UCF. So it worked out pretty well for me. Um, I learned a lot my, my rookie year. I'm sorry, I said my rookie year. My, my freshman year, I learned a lot. Uh, and, you know, it, it happened, you know, in a different kind of way as far as, you know, getting injured was concerned. But I think the red shirt year was really good for me. Mm -hmm. So do you have a favorite memory throughout playing at UCF? Uh, I'd say my favorite memory was the conference championship we won. Um, my, my, my freshman year, we were 0-11, uh, which was probably one of the toughest seasons I've ever been through uh, playing football. But, you know, we never gave up, obviously. We were, you know, we knew what we were capable of. And we came back next year with, you know, almost pretty much the same team and had one of the best turnarounds in, in college football history. And we were able to keep building on that. And two years later, we actually won the conference championship. Uh, and that was probably my best memory. Uh, it, was, it was a great game. It was on TV. And it was actually one of the first championships that I've ever won playing football. Uh, so it was a big day, and just to be able to share that with all my teammates was a really big deal. That was probably my, my favorite game uh, while I was at UCF. So what was the hype like uh, for the draft during your senior season? Um, I was hearing a lot of different things from a, from a lot of people. Uh, before the year, I decided, you know, I sat down with my parents, and we decided to, to just focus on my senior year first. Uh, I didn't want to let – draft talk and you know whether I was going to get drafted or where I was going to go free agent I didn't want any of that to affect how I played my senior year right but because you know all in all how I played my senior year was going to affect what I was going to be speculating about the better I played my senior year uh, the better chance I was going to have of getting drafted and the better chance I was going to have of uh, you know making making a team one way or another so I didn't really didn't really want to think about it my entire my entire senior year uh, so as soon as the year was over, I was kind of bombarded with the whole draft situation, and, you know, free agent situation. But I was glad that I didn't let it affect my senior year because I think that was a year when I was able to make some improvements uh, football-wise that helped me out a lot. Mm -hmm. Throughout college, you had interceptions and big hits. What's the better feeling? Oh, man, interceptions are big hits. Believe it or not, um, like, I, I mean, I was a receiver in high school, so my, my entire freshman year in college was almost spent learning how to tackle. I mean, obviously I knew how to get people down, but there's there's a, there's an art to tackling that, I mean, I haven't mastered it. I don't think anybody has completely mastered it, but, you, you know, you, you continue to get better at tackling. Uh, so I was, I was, you know, struggling. I'd say I was, I was struggling my first, my first year, just learning how to tackle properly because uh, I didn't have to do it in high school. Honestly, I played safety, but I was more of a, a center field type safety. I wasn't really you know, putting the run game at all. So I think because of that and, you know, the, the struggles that I had my freshman year and, you know, having to work harder, you know, to learn how to tackle, you know, interceptions, I was a receiver, so catching the ball kind of came naturally. So I, I'd say because of that, I think the big, bigger hits, you know, come, come a little bit less often and they're a little bit more satisfying than interceptions. I say an interception that gets taken all the way back. A pick six is probably the best feeling for a DB, but uh, I think a big hit for me personally, just because I know, you know, the the things I've gone through to get better at tackling. Uh, I think that uh, that's that helped me out as far as figuring out which one to look better. I say big hits are a little bit more satisfying for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, what was your actual draft day experience like? Um, it was a little different, I'd say. Uh, Knew going into the draft, you know, first day was going to be a miracle if it did happen. Uh, so, you know, the first day was spent just, you know, looking for other guys, guys I knew, uh, being happy for other guys, you know, getting getting an opportunity. Uh, second day was, you know, the day when I was looking at going, probably was what I was told, you know, anywhere from the fifth, seventh round to, to free agent. So, uh, you know, I was actually, you know, we were, it was myself, my mom, and my, my dad and my little brother at the house. We were just watching it together. Uh, you know, walking walking about the house as it was going on with all the TVs on, and actually ended up laying down in my room around I'd say mid sixth round, and actually fell asleep. I'm not sure how I managed to fall asleep in the middle of uh, one of the most important days of my life, but I actually fell asleep in the room, and didn't wake up until I got a call from my agent letting me know that the teams were were offering me. Uh, he was letting me know all the teams that were calling, and you know it was a pretty quick decision so i was you know trying to wipe sleep out of my eyes while i was making the decision of what team i wanted to go to 
but uh, it, it was good. You know, once it happened, I think I was really relieved because the buildup is it's hard to explain. You know, guys that are looking at getting drafted and not sure where they're going to be in a week, uh, where they're going to be living. Uh, it's, it's a little different. It's a different experience than, than a lot of people get to have. So once I knew where I was going, I knew I was going to end up in New York, and I knew I was going to get the opportunity that I was working for, it was, I'd say it was a really good day just because it, the opportunity came and I was blessed enough to, to sign with somebody. So uh, what was your first training camp like with the Giants? Uh, training camp was good. Uh, training camp was training camp, so it, it was hard, you know, like it was like it was advertised to be. Uh, coach Coughlin is a, you know, a, a pretty tough coach. He, he's very understanding and very knowledgeable of the game, but, you know, he makes sure that he has, you know, tough players, and that's something that the Giants organization was – was was known for and you know camp was camp was definitely hard just like college camp was hard and i'm sure every other you know every other team's camp is, is just as difficult but uh you know making the transition was was a little it was a little it was a little different uh, i think one thing about the nfl and the ncaa that you realize is the professionalism that goes along with it you can kind of feel the i wouldn't say tension but you know there's a little bit more pressure because you know that you're always playing football for fun but uh, it's not just for fun anymore in the NFL. You, you know, you're trying to make a living, and I think you, you could feel that. So uh, as far as learning, it's a little bit more difficult. Obviously, the guys got a little bit bigger and a little bit faster. That is, didn't know if that was possible coming out of college, but it was. Uh, but I learned I learned a lot. Uh, you know, my teammates helped me out a lot. I was able to, you know, look, look to the other, the other rookies that came in with me uh, when I was there. And it went well. Uh, there was ups and downs, had good practices, had bad practices. I had good preseason, good preseason games. I had I had preseason games that I felt like I could have played a little bit better in. Uh, ultimately, I like I was you know was put on practice squad with the Giants, which wasn't my ultimate goal. You know, obviously everybody wants to come out of camp and, and get a starting job, whether it be on special teams or defense. But uh, I learned a lot during camp and also throughout the year. You know, while I was on practice squad, and I was really really thankful for the opportunity to be there. And I think camp. I uh, was was a great learning experience. I got a lot better, you know, at many things, uh, football wise, and uh, no, also, also off the field, uh, learning the game as well. So it was it was a great experience. So what was the transition like to the Redskins? Uh, the transition to the Redskins, you just it's it's hard because you have to get used to different. I wouldn't wouldn't say traditions, but different ways that things are that things are run in different organizations. Uh, you know, meetings are always run a little bit more a little bit differently, no matter where you go. Uh, practices will be a little bit a little bit different uh, but I mean as always I had teammates to help me out you know walked in the first day you know met all the DBs met the defense and you know slowly got acquainted with the coaches and things like that and uh, I think after a week or two you, you get used to it in, in the end it's all it's all performance based I mean it's going to come down to what you do you know when you put the pads on and what you do at practice so uh, it was it was hard always, you know, just like going to a new school. My dad was in the Navy when I was little, so I was, you know, every couple of years I was, you know, at a different school. And I say it's kind of comparable to that. You kind of have to feel your way around for a couple of days, maybe a week or two. But uh, once once it comes down to it, you know, it's all going to come down to what you do at practice, what you do, you know, once you get out and play football. So everything else will come come with time. But I love love the Redskins organization and uh, you know hope to stay there as long as I can. Uh, what are your expectations for uh, next year? Um, I mean, my expectations are probably what you would expect out of anybody that wants to play football. I want to play. I want to get on the field. I want to be active, you know, all year. Uh, obviously, there's a lot that comes with that. And, uh, hard work is, is one of the things. I'm, you know, working hard in the offseason, getting in, getting in great shape, you know, learning as much as I can uh, football-wise and any, anything that can help me. Uh, so I want to get on the field. Uh, uh, whether it be special teams, uh, you know, defense, any any way I can contribute to the team, I think that's one thing that everybody has in common. You want to do whatever you can to go on the field and help the team win. Uh, so I, I just want to. My goal for myself is is to play. I mean, it's that simple. Uh, obviously, I, I appreciate any chance that I got, uh, whether just to be you know on any, on a roster. But uh, for myself, I know what I'm capable of, and you know, you watch other guys a lot of the times. You're always very confident in yourself. And you uh, kind of look at, you know, watch games and go, oh, I can do that. You know what I mean? I can't wait till I get my opportunity. But you have to make your opportunity. So uh, I'm just expect my expectations for myself for to get on the field this year and, and to make plays for the, for the team. So uh, do you have a favorite memory in the NFL? Um, I wouldn't say a favorite memory. 
uh, as far as a specific event, I think that the one thing that I've enjoyed about the NFL so much is just like when you any any time you're going somewhere where you're not familiar with yourself, you're always worried about you know what the team's going to be like and things like that. And I think that what I've taken away from every each year that I've been in the NFL is you know brotherhood, uh, the team locker room camaraderie. It's hard to it's hard to explain, and I know it's a it's a general answer that pretty much everybody gives, but. I think you know if I were to walk, you know if I were to never play another another down, I think that I would appreciate uh, you know the friends that I made, the, the coaches, the, the players, as well the organizations that I've become acquainted with. Uh, I think that my favorite thing so far about the NFL, you know, obviously along with playing, is uh, you know just 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 meeting a lot of great people and you know making a lot of good friends. All right, so um, here's a. Fan favorite question: uh, If you could describe yourself as any ice cream flavor, what would you be and why? Um, any ice cream flavor? Uh, I'd have to go with Rocky Road. Um, I'm not exactly sure how you could equate that to a person, but I don't know. I guess I've been through a lot as far as the process getting into the NFL, getting into college, and things like that. So I would say, you know, Rocky Road is, is something that would kind of symbolize how I felt. You know, I've I've gotten to where I am. Uh, a lot of ups, a lot of downs, uh, but you know, still, still working on it, and, and hopefully, I'll be able to, you know, achieve everything that I set out to do. Your younger brother is in high school, so right. uh, what? What's the what's the advice you give him? I mean, I just just try to to lead by example for the most part. He sees how hard I work when I come home. He sees, you know, how much goes into it, and how well you have to do in school, you know, to even get an opportunity. And I mean, we we've, we've sat down and talked a couple times, you know, about exactly what goes on or you know what what's necessary. But for the most part, it's just by example. Um, but he's I mean he's doing well on his own for the most part. Uh, but if he ever has any questions, I try to help him out, uh, football wise and you know, school wise and anything as far as choosing colleges and you know what's what's going to come with your decisions and things like that. But uh, I mean, he's bigger than I am. He's actually a linebacker, so he's about three inches taller than me, and probably outweighs me by about ten pounds. And he's he's still sixteen; he'll be seventeen pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I just give him as much as advice I can from experience. I think experience is the best way to to teach, honestly. So I feel like anything that I can that I've been through that I know he's going to have to go through, I try to share it with him because I think it'll help my life. So uh, for someone who wants to play in the NFL, uh, what's the best advice you can give them? Um, the best advice I can give to somebody who would want to play in the NFL would be uh, not to look too far ahead. Um, everything that you're doing now is going to contribute to your chances to play in college, to play in the NFL, to play at whatever level it is you know you want to play to continue playing football. Uh, don't think that it's just going to happen. You have to focus on you know this practice, this game, this meeting, you know this playbook. You have to do the things now because. You know, you're not going to be able to look back. Y'all look back and say, you know, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done that. Just try to try to make it to where you're not going to have any regrets uh, as far as effort is concerned, as far as studying is concerned, because those are things that are going to help you. The better you play today, uh, this week, and the better you play this game, that's going to that's going to help your chances to get into the NFL. So so try not to look too far ahead and just focus on what's going on right now and, you know, do your best in your situation, and that's what's going to lead you to, to your goals. So is there... Anything you want to tell your fans or Redskins fans that we haven't really discussed or talked about? Um, first of all, I mean, I'd like to thank, I'm not going to sit here and act like I have a huge fan base by any means, but uh, just, you know, thank all the people that have supported me, you know, to get even where I am today. Um, obviously, I, you know, hopefully I have a long way to go and a lot of good things ahead of me. But uh, I just want to thank, you know, anybody that's been supporting me so far. I mean, my family, my friends and things like that. But as far as, you know, fans are concerned, I would say just look out for me. Uh, I'm planning on, you know, doing big things and, and making a name for myself. So uh, continue to support me and, and look out for me because I'll be out there soon. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Sharif. Oh, thank I you. really appreciate you no taking problem. the time and everything. So thanks. No problem.